What's up everybody, this is Cody Bidlow with Athlete X, and today we're going to be talking about speed work. Thanks for tuning in and I hope you enjoy. Uh, speed is the most sought after quality in athletes of all types, uh, including sprinters and team sport athletes. Oftentimes people think of speed work as only benefiting people in the 60 or the 100 meter dash, maybe the 200, but in reality, any event, primarily those between 60 and 400 meters, can greatly benefit from speed work. First and foremost, speed training is training to sprint as fast as you possibly can. That is, increasing the velocity with which you sprint. It is not increasing the endurance that you have with your speed. It is not increasing acceleration. It is not doing agility ladders. It is not running 150s. It is not doing a high volume of low quality sprints. Speed training needs to be of high quality, low volume, between distances of 30 to 60 meters, done at maximal intensity at your maximal velocity. That's it. So what are some of the effects of speed training? First and foremost, we increase skill and in sprinting and coordination of your movements. This will increase your running efficiency and your running economy. Um, I see sprinting as a skill-based activity with highly complex sequences of movements. And to train that, and to get better at that, you have to develop the skill of sprinting above all else. That includes how you move, where you place your foot on the ground, sequences of movement, postures, all these things come together to form the skill that is sprinting. And the only way to develop that is to do it. So if you want to sprint fast, you have to train fast. Second, elasticity of tissues is increased, which helps you store energy and prevent injury. Um, sprinting as fast as you can requires that you store energy in elastic tissues as your leg is cycling through. For example, your foot will swing forward as you're driving the leg down. First it'll swing forward and then it'll whip back down to the ground. That stretch and shortening cycle right there is storing energy. And the only way to do that most effectively is to train the elastic tissues to be able to be elastic and store energy. Third, by training speed, you increase the duration of the race where you're using the ATP creatine phosphate energy system. So ATP creatine phosphate gives you the fastest source of energy, the most explosive source of energy. And so if you can use that for a larger proportion of the race, you're gonna be spending more time in your race at your most effective, most powerful and fastest state. So the only way to increase that is to train. Fourth, there are various central nervous system effects of training speed, um, which are very important for speed and power athletes. First, Capacity for high intensity work increases as you do speed work. So the more you train for speed, the larger your capacity will be for sprinting, such as acceleration or speed work, jumping activities, high intensity lifting. All of that, your capacities will increase if you train for speed. Second, rate coding abilities will increase, which means the, the speed or the quickness with which you can fire uh, messages in your nervous system or send electric impulses to your muscles will increase. So rate coding will also go up. Third. Um, recruitment of high threshold motor units will happen so what that means is you have certain motor units in your body which are bundles of muscle fibers that are innervated by a single nerve that motor unit it could be a lower threshold motor unit which means it's going to be activated sooner and it's going to put out less power less force and less speed higher threshold motor units take more to activate but they also produce more force and allow you to you know do things like jump high and run fast so as you train speed, you're going to shift the preference to recruiting those higher threshold motor units so you can put out more effective you know, force, speed, and power. Some of the muscular effects of training for speed are a fiber type shift toward type 2 fibers. Now depending on all of the things you do in your training, you may shift more toward type 2A or 2B or 2X. But in general, if you're training for speed, you'll see a slight shift from type 1 fibers to type 2 fibers. Also, your resting tone will go up and the reactivity of your muscles will go up. So anybody who trains knows that after a long weekend of rest, you feel kind of flat, not very explosive. Um, and that's because your tone has gone down. So if you train speed regularly, you keep the tone up, you keep the reactivity of the muscles up and your quickness, speed and power are gonna stay in a good place. Lastly, for muscular effects, you get improved intra and intermuscular coordination. So that means between muscle groups as well as between fibers within the same muscle, you will get better coordination of movement and contraction so that your body is timing up better when to contract, when to relax, when it's a concentric versus an isometric or eccentric contraction. Those coordinations 
or that coordination by the body will improve if you do speed training. The result of all of this, hopefully, is to increase the velocity with which you sprint. The ultimate goal of speed training. To make sure your speed session is most effective and that you're regularly setting yourself up for success, there's some things you got to keep in mind. First, you need a thorough warm-up. If you need uh, ideas for that, I have some videos in my channel. Um, I can post up a link right here and um, go there. You can check out the warm-ups, get yourself set up for your uh, session. Second, you want to have quality footwear. You don't want to be wearing shoes that are either unsupportive, falling apart, or anything like that. We want to use quality surfaces. So if you're on grass, it should be short grass that is even. If you're on a track, make sure it's uh, soft enough to where you know, you're not going to be hurt every day by training on it because it's too hard to find either a good quality track or some nice grass. Third, begin the session with accelerations or wickets. These will set your body up to be able to do the more high intensity speed work later in the session without getting injured. Um, you always have to progress from slower, less intense work to faster and more high intense work. So before you can do a max velocity flying sprint, you should either do some accelerations or some wickets to prepare your body and prepare your nervous system for the work at hand. So with these speed sessions, you can either do wickets by themselves, complex with flying sprints, or just flying sprints on their own. On the topic of flying sprints, the way you set these up is you have an acceleration zone where you're building, building, building up to an upright posture and a point so that when you reach the flying zone, you can then be at max velocity. So you're going to accelerate 20 to 35 meters, and then from there you're going to be sprinting at max velocity for 10 to 30 meters. So generally you'll want to progress from a shorter acceleration and a shorter flying zone to a longer acceleration and a longer flying zone as you improve throughout the season or as multiple seasons go by and you accelerate deeper into your race and you run at a higher speed, you're going to increase those distances that you run. But we're going to prefer to start shorter, progress to longer. Start less intense and progress to more intense. As far as rest goes, you'll probably want to go between 4 and 10 minutes depending on the distances you're running, the intensities you're running at, how close you are to a competition, all of these things come into play. And that's where the art of coaching comes, uh, comes to mind because you can't just read a book, apply something blindly and expect it to work. You have to be intuitive, you have to respond to how your body feels, what's going on with your scheduling, all of these things play a role. And so when it comes to rest intervals, I give you a range of four to 10 minutes as somewhere to stay between. Now to make sure you don't get hurt while doing speed training and you know as always continuing to set yourself up for success you need to prepare your body both before the workout during the workout and after the workout um, via self-therapy so this includes self-massage rolling using a stick joint pumping or joint mobilizations um, floss band work maybe some trigger pointing all of these things need to be incorporated before the session, during the session, in between the repetitions, and after the session, so that over time, you're keeping your tissues healthy so that from a mechanical standpoint, you're able to perform the work necessary and do it with the proper technique. Mechanical restrictions, such as tight muscles, connective tissue, adhesions, and things like that, will reduce your technical efficiency and reduce your ability to sprint. So make sure that you're doing self-therapy all around the session, in between sessions, within the session, so that you're making sure your body is in the most optimal state to perform the high intensity work at hand. To release the biceps femoris, you want to use a softball and go right along the muscle. For the quad, we'll use a stick and we'll go along the length of the muscle. For the psoas, we're going to place a softball two inches from the tip of the hip and two inches from the belly button. Place it right there, lay into it, and then extend your hip. For the back of the shoulder, we'll use a foam roller. Also get under the armpit for the upper lat. 
this band distraction, you want the band just pulling your femur forward, squeeze the glute, create a little stretch on the front side, and just kind of squeeze and release, squeeze and release. For this next one, we'll place it around the uh, tibia. We're going to push the knee forward, keeping the foot in place. This will help increase your dorsiflexion range of motion, help keep the bones in good position, keep your ankles healthy. For today's workout, we're going to combine wicket sprints with flying sprints. The wickets are going to be done in approximately a 30 meter zone with a 20 meter zone at the end for running out, continuing to maintain that form and those postures in the wickets. Then we're going to follow that up with some flying 30s done from blocks. We're going to accelerate for 30 meters out of blocks and then hit a 30 meter max velocity zone in the flying sprint. As you can see here, we got various cones set up. You can see the blocks way off in the distance, followed by a blue cone, a yellow cone, and then an orange cone. Every small disc cone signifies 10 meters. The orange cones are set up at 30 and 60 meters. So the disc cones sort of give you context for how you should rise through the uh, repetition, um, so you know where you're at for every 10 meter segment. And then the big cones signify when it's time to put the burners on, be hitting max velocity during this zone trying to maintain through the zone and then decelerate for as long as you can. In conclusion, when it comes to speed training, the sole goal is to increase the velocity with which you sprint. So anytime you talk about speed specifically, not acceleration, not speed endurance, not tempo endurance, not strength endurance, speed is to increase your velocity. Okay, Number one, it's the sole goal. Second, quality must always take precedence over volume. You can only increase the volume or do more work if the quality is high, and if you're able to continue to put out quality repetitions. Your body will remember whatever you do. Every moment is a teaching moment from a movement perspective. So if you're teaching your body with poor quality movements, what do you expect it to remember? Poor quality. If you teach it with high quality movements, that's what it's gonna remember, and that's what you're gonna default to in competition. For speed sessions, you'll utilize wickets in flying runs or flying sprints. Um, you can combine them within the session, you can separate them between sessions, but whatever you do, it's wise to progress from more wicket volume earlier in the year to more flying volume later in the year. Ensure that you're performing self-therapy or if you have a therapist that they're performing therapy on you before the session, during the session, and after the session. Always ensure that you're using quality footwear and quality surfaces to prevent injury, uh, prevent chronic overuse, and also to keep your training uh, Always use quality footwear and quality surfaces to ensure that the quality of your training is kept as high as possible and you prevent injury and overuse problems. It's wise to always follow a speed day with either a low intensity or a recovery day as the nervous system fatigue and the local fatigue within the muscles from a speed session is pretty high. It's about as high as it can get. So make sure that the day following your speed work is focused on active recovery or complete rest um, to ensure you don't go into overtraining by doing too much speed work back to back to back. Thank you all for watching, I really appreciate it. Don't forget to subscribe down there. Um, check out our website at this link and check us out on social media over here. Thanks.